guys, we'll be live. Welcome this evening. Thank you that you saw me here. Hope you did. We this Wednesday evening where we have refuel, and we just decided we will we will continue this evening on this on this time slot. It's the middle of the week. Let's try and see if we can fill up a tank or two. And if you're there this this, this evening, then thank you for visiting with me. It's great to be with you. It's good to be part of you, uh, your company this evening. <clears throat> and it's it's a pleasure for me to just share the good word of God with you this evening. Father, we just thank you for this day that we could just silence ourselves this evening, Lord, and just keep, become a little bit quiet. And Father, give us time that as we, as we really study your word this evening, Lord, and that you just share your heart and your direction for our lives with us this evening. We invite you in. We invite you to spend this time with us and to speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Okay, so what do we do this evening? I'm going to ask you this question. I'm going to ask you, are you running towards God or are you running away from God? It's important that we understand that. Are you running to God or are you running from God? Are you asking people, why are you asking me the question? It's very simple. I'm asking you for the question because lots of people in life today, they spend their whole lives running from God. And in the same way, they, 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 they're like fugitives who run away, run from from the police. If you if you've done something wrong, you would you would carry on running. They people a lot of people are convinced that that God is just there for, just to just to get hold of us to to after us. Them they don't want to face God. People don't want to really face God. Um, they don't want to talk to God. We have this this privilege and the honor of speaking to God. We don't want to talk to God. People don't even make time to think about God, and. Um, it's, it's very, very, it's very sad because God has has this for us, and 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 He wants to spend this this precious time with us. He doesn't want us to run away from Him. Do you think a lot of I've heard people say that I'm not ready for this. This is gonna, you know, this 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 lifestyle is gonna is gonna cramp my style. So what style do we have? If if that's gonna cramp your style, what 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 do we have? What, what is in your life right now when you when you come to to worship God you, where do you find ourselves this evening worshiping God is it are you are you are you doing the will of the father or are you doing your own will God's will is for every human being <clears throat> to bow before him because he he was responsible for for the human race and so I think we owe it to God to so that when he calls us and he reveals himself to us in various ways that we just understand the, re the, the revelation of the call and say, wow, God's called me. The, the same person, the same God that created heaven and earth has, has called me. As, as much as he, do you remember a guy called Jonah? God, God, called, God called Jonah. And, and, and Jonah had to go and do something for God. And Jonah just didn't, just obviously, obviously he did the opposite. It, God called Jonah and he said, come here. Then Jonah would just look away. So Jonah was ready because God wanted to use Jonah. Jonah didn't see himself as ready to be used by God. And I think that most of us on the face of this earth, we can relate to that. But many people I've met in my life, they say, I'm not ready for this yet. Now, I don't know when we are ready for this and when we will be ready for us. Um, but I want to ask you a question or two as we as we go along and 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 in, in this little study this evening. And the first thing I want to ask you this evening is, if, if God had to reveal himself completely to you today, and he probably has, what has been our response to, to God when he, when he reveals himself to us? A lot of people say, but yeah, God really came through for me. And when he came, did come through for us, what did we do? How did we respond for the coming through? How did we respond when he, when he just gave us that little bit extra just to break through? You know what, what happens? Sometimes when God calls us, we, we just like put our heads down and just run the opposite direction. Bachatos. Um, and if you're going to look at the book of Jonah, I want, to, I, want to, I want to just concentrate on Jonah this evening. You're going to look at Jonah 1, verse 1 and 2. And you see what it says. The Lord, the Lord gave this message to Jonah, the son of Amittai. Get up and go to the great, listen to it. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment. He says, this is what's going to happen to you guys. Against it because I have seen how wicked its people are. So God has seen, but he's going to use Jonah just to take the message and say to these guys, Dude, whoa, relax here. There's, there's problems coming for you. 
listen to what does Jonah do? He, 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 he just gets up and starts running in another direction, except to Nineveh. Jonah runs, but not to Nineveh. He runs to some other place. When he, when he heard the voice of God speaking to him, I think he just he, 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 got, a, he got a fat script there. He, he just didn't know what to do. God's voice is, cannot be mistaken. So I need to share that with you this evening, that, that God's voice cannot be mistaken. God has spoken to you and I on various occasions. How well have we heard the voice? Throughout the Bible, you'll see that God's voice is easily mistaken. It's not easily mistaken. You, remember Adam and Eve in the garden when, when he said, where, where are you? What did they do? They just I hid. So they knew that was the voice of God. They hid it. And, it, and, and you're going to look at it. Exodus 19. Moses clearly heard God call him on the top of that mountain. Loud and clear. Exodus 3. Moses heard the voice of God in no uncertain matter, telling him, dude, you're standing on holy ground. I didn't say dude, he said, you're standing on holy ground. Judges 2, the Israelites heard God's voice, rebuking them, telling them what they've done wrong in the disobedience. How do we know that? Because they started crying. They started crying loud. Isaiah 6, God reveals himself to Isaiah through the vision in the temple. He speaks. God speaks. When Jonah heard the word of voice of the Lord, what did he do? He just packed out there, one leg before the other. Jonah did one, we made one mistake. You see, Jonah is like you and I, as, as, as we are today. We don't, we don't run to God. We run from God. And we shouldn't do that. We should run to God. If we if we want the blessing from God in our life, we've got to run to God. So somebody somebody say it with me. To God. Not, not from God, but to God. And when we run to God, we're going to be, he's going to wait for us. He's going to receive us. We're going to be received by God, by, 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 by God in this situation. Now listen to me carefully. If you, if you send people on a, on, on a race, on, on, a, on, on, a, on a track, an oval track or something like that, you put them on the way. Marks you more. You marks. You said go. Do they go the other direction, or do they go to the winning line? When God calls us, He's calling us to come to Him because He is the winning line. You see, once we get to know God, we know what God's got planned for us, and that's where we're going to go because He is the ultimate place on the podium, and that's where we need to go. Not the opposite direction, but where He is. So, we, what we understand here. What we understand, because Jonah, Jonah was called to be a prophet. Jonah was called to go to Nineveh. He had a message to go and tell the people, which God wanted him to take to people. But he ran the other way. You see, what happens when, when you see a bit, bit about it, but what happens, how do I know when God's speaking? When the Holy Spirit convicts you of something, that's when God is busy speaking to you. The conviction of the Holy Spirit is a reminder that God is busy with you. The voice of God is coming through for you, slowly but surely. And when and when it's like it's like what happens when the holy 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 spirit convicts us sometimes we we want to run away we're so scared and that's exactly what happened to jonah have you done that before have you come to this place because why am i asking the question you see my friend i need i've i've, I've come across this in, in in life and and through and and it's been phew, you meet a lot of people when you walk this walk and most people are running from God and not to God. Because how do you know people are running from God? You say to me, Peter, how do you know that? Are you so clever? No. I just have to listen to the excuses of people that don't want to come to God. Then I know they're running from God. If you if you got a, if there's an excuse, if you, if you can't come, then then there's an excuse. You've got to run to God, not from God. If God calls, you gotta to come to God. So 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 we wanna we, we, no excuse. God says, come. We say, I'm coming. God said to Jonah, I'm calling you. Jonah said, uh-uh, I'm out of here. I'm, I'm on another, I'm going, I'm going to run from you, Lord. I'm going to run. I don't, I don't want to go and talk to lost people. I don't want to take your message. I don't want to go and leave it there. We're like Jonah today. 
there's no there's no difference between us and Jonah. But what do we do? Is 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 let's profess who God is in our life. Can you do that to CV? You say, oh, Peter, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to do that. I want to, I want to profess who God is. And I'm saying to you, if you can start doing that, you're not, you're going to stop running. A lot of people are running today, friend. But let's run to God, and not from God. You say that with me. Let's run to God, but not from God. Surely, God placed His church upon the face of the earth, not to run from Him, but towards to walk to to move towards Him. So if we part of the church. And you've gone, we heard that in, in weeks gone by. Then we've got to run to God and not from God. So here we go. If, if, if God's Holy Spirit is working with you and I, convicting us of something we should be doing, but we're not doing it, let us catch ourselves this evening and say, Yo, hey, come back rock still, come back weet waar ek is, come back op hardloop, and come back dry, na die gezicht van die toe. Because you see, as soon as I turn to God, the Holy Spirit sees me and I, my heart starts going into action. My heart starts receiving the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And there's, there's, a, there's an action that starts taking place. Sometimes it could be painful. Sometimes that the conviction of the Holy Spirit is telling me that I want to use you, dude, but there's some things here we need to sort out first. I, I need you to come to me, but you haven't made that final decision to follow me full on. And so there's pain that goes with that. And so we must get to this place where we say, but how am I going to find that out? Stop running from God. We've got to run to God and not away from God. So we, are, we don't want to be like Jonah. Jonah, Jonah if Jonah carried, carried on running away from God, the people of Nineveh would never ever have had the chance to redeem themselves. If we keep on running away from God, we're not going to have a full on chance of redemption in our life. We're not, we're not going to live that convicted life that God wants us to live with him under the working of the Holy Spirit in our life. The God's love and Jonah's hate caused, that caused an inconsistency because God loved and Jonah didn't want to do. So there was a, they, they were, they were, they were team, team tagging. But the only problem here was the one team went that way and and God stood stone and his teammate just I'm not part of this team. He kept on pulling away. Now you say to me, how do I change? It's difficult. I say to you, I know. It's, I know. Being down that road, for friend, being down that road, change is hard and it's painful. You want to write that down? Change is hard, but it's painful. So if you look at today, if, if you look at life today, and it's dear my God, this, this world has never been, except probably in Bible times, but now it is, it's upside down. There's no place to pack it right, right now. Every person is on his own tangent. Every person believes what they want to believe. Every person has got a, 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 a solution to the problem. The world is, is so chaotic at the moment. Only God, my friend, can fix it. Hear that from me this evening. The chaos in the world can only be fixed by Jesus Christ. And so therefore, we must stop running and come towards the altar. We need to come into the holiness. We need to understand why God created this earth and, and place in the first, in the first and, and, and start taking back because the enemy is having a field day in this world right now. So let's, let's, let's put ourselves into position. And so we want to be like little Jonas. We want to start taking, a, taking this message and, and floating around and finding a place. How can we get there? And establishing the, the kingdom for God. Let God establish himself in us. And we go out and we establish the kingdom for God. Isn't that what you want to do as a Christian person? Is to help somebody rather than just, guys, let's stop running. Let's come. You see what happens when we run from God. I want to tell you something this evening, which is so important, and you can write this down, and you can put it in your Bible, put it everywhere. When we run from God, there's something that you and I understand. We will not escape. You said to me, you're clever. I oh, know, no, I'm not clever. Not at all. When we run from God, we will not escape. The Lord, the word of the Lord has come. And Jonah had no doubt about that. Jonah knew what God wanted him to do. The word of God came. 
John and you, what are you going to do? Check it out with me. <clears throat> third, third verse. First chapter. <clears throat> but Jonah got up and went the opposite direction in order to get away from the Lord. He went down to the sea coast, to the port of Joppa, where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. He bought a ticket and went on board, hoping that by going away to the west, he could escape from the Lord. Uh -uh. God said, Jonah, go to Nineveh. But Jonah decided, I'm going to do something else. The sun is coming up in a different spot for me this evening. That's where I'm going. <clears throat> How many times is it possible for you and I to look into the faces of lost people and see potential, see leaders of potential amongst this place? But the only thing lacking is the cause of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> there was such a man in the Bible. He was called the rich young ruler. The rich young ruler. He said, <clears throat> good master, what do I have to do to inherit the kingdom? Eternal life. And Jesus said, keep the commandments. And he said, I've done that. He said, it doesn't sound like we do. I've done that. Jesus said, one thing you lack. Go and sell everything you have. <clears throat> Give it to the poor and come follow me. The Bible says he went away because he had great wealth. But he was also sad. Close. Almost saved, but not saved. Committed? No. But wanted to? Going to? But. It makes no difference what follows the word but. The word but is in between what we need to do and what we have to do. If it's there, but takes you away. If you're going, but keeps you here. If it's there, but you go in there. If it's yes, but no. So but is not very positive in most instances. So the word but is a response to God's word. <laughs> Checkmate. That's exactly what it is. When God speaks and you're doing the difference, God called, but we turned away. God said go. But we were too busy. God says, yeah, but we looked there. But is not a good word when it comes to listening to, the, to, to God's word. God's word is, is there for you and I to go, to go and live out. God's word is there for you and I not to, to be a but person. God's but. Top. We're not supposed to be that person. But what happens when the tables are turned one day? What happens if God stands before you and I and he says, Peter, I had this plan for you. And he says, this is what you were going to do. This is what you're going to become. This is what... And you stand there and you, got to, oh, you have this opportunity of listening to God. And God doesn't let you don't finish the sentence. He says, I wanted to give you all this. I wanted to take you there. I was going to open that door for you. And you're saying, wow. And he says, but you went the other direction. How sad will that be? I called you in, but you turned my back on me. You were too busy. I said, my spirit convicted you and said, pray, son, pray, my daughter. I'm listening. I'm waiting. I can see the conviction. The conviction is there. I'm listening. I will receive you right now. But you heard something else. Your, your mind was taken. Your spirit sagged and you walked away. And I couldn't receive you. How, how, would, we, how would we respond? Speaking to God in a situation like that, just because of that one little word, but changed the destiny that we were destined for, took away the joy, turned it into sorrow. But here's the good news. But I said no, but here's the good news. The good news is that we have, we can be redeemed from that. 
and not but again. How are we going to do that, Peter? God calls, that's where we're going to go. We're not going any other direction. We, we're going where he calls us to. We're going to, we're going to move with, with his call. And not the way Jonah did, but Jonah. No. Whenever you hear that word, but Jonah again, but Peter, then, but the, then walk away. Don't let your, your precious future be, be taken away from you. Let us not come to a place where we want to reject God's will for our life. Let us alone be responsible for, for the decision we make and not blame anybody else around us because we are responsible for our own destiny as individual people. <clears throat> You're responsible for your own decisions, friend, as much as I am for mine. And Jonah was for his, Jonah just got up and he went the opposite direction. It was his, his call to go the opposite direction. When the, word of word, when the word of God comes, shouldn't we just bow down? Jesus bowed down in Gethsemane. And he didn't say, I'm not going to do this. He said, not my will, but your will be done. He could have got up walked out could have just walked away from everything but he didn't do that because it was the will of the father that he had to do and jesus <clears throat> his will for you and i is this is that we would be called and that we would go and that he would send us have you have you have you have you risen up walked away <clears throat> Jonah, Jonah did that. Jo Jonah did that. Let us not do that. Let us not be like like Jonah. Because the Bible tells us one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let me put in the word but quickly. But for those, but for those who heard and didn't walk away. There was redemption. There was salvation. Isn't that what we should do? Isn't that how we, how we should embrace this running to or running from God this evening? Isn't that what we should do as, and just embrace it this morning? And stop right there where, this afternoon, right there where you are right now. And let me ask you, after this busy day, after this world that's gone absolutely ballistic, after all the news, after every <clears throat> every piece of social piece of social media that's still stuck in the mind somewhere, there's a little piece stuck here and a little piece there. Or just this this is calm down quickly. <clears throat> Let me ask you quickly and just if you be very honest with yourself. Where are you this evening? God calls you right now. Zap. You do what God tells you to do. Would you go where God tells you to go? You God, will you stop doing what you're doing right now? The problem is, you know, God's really, this is something else for another day, but I just want to just give you a little, little hint of it. <clears throat> many, many years ago, God said this thing to me, Peter. He said, Pete, never forget where you come from, my son. And I think a lot of people have. And that's why we're in the Tilma we are at the moment. So I'm busy working on, on that right now. <clears throat> Where should we go to, to feel better? <clears throat> doesn't have to be the bad places. <clears throat> could be the good places. doesn't have to be, say, oh, but I've got to unwind, man. <clears throat> well, only unwind. Unwind in such a way that you don't, you're not a disappointment to your creator because he's called you. And he wants to send you on a on a mission. Oh man, how cool is that? God wants to send all of us on a mission. His children, he wants to send us on a mission. He wants us to go on a mission to show the world what, what he's all about. We can just talk to people. But he wants to send us on the same mission as he sent, he sent Jonah on. Because Jonah had to go and tell the people, hey dude, whoa, stop what you're doing. Your oaks are out of hand here. There's going to come a time. I'm, I'm just a messenger. I'm bringing you the message. I'm telling you what, what's going to happen. Stop it. You've got time to stop it. 
And when you stop it right now, you know what's going to happen? You're going to have a time of your life when the good things come your way. And that was why he called Jonah. So Jonah could just take the thing and, and go and he say, he said, but I can just walk away. I tell you, you can't. The Spirit of God is everywhere. Psalm writer says it in Psalm 139, verse 7 and 8. He says, I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the place of the dead, you are there. God's presence is all over, man. All over. You can never escape from God by running. And if you've run up until tonight, up until today, and up until you've heard this message today, wherever, wherever you, you maybe off, well, well after this comes out again, will you stop running? If you want to stop running, we, if, we, if we stop, you say, but I'm not going to stop running. I said, okay, fine. Do you know that there's a price to pay? There's a, there's a little price to pay. Let me just go through again what I just said just now. I said, in, in that verse, it says, Jonah went, got up and he went the opposite direction. He went to the, he bought himself a ticket at the port of Joppa. He, was, he got on a ship, ducked in the other, the other direction, <clears throat> hoping, the Bible says, hoping to get away. Not, not, not going, not, not knowing, hoping to get away. Not, not, there, was, there was no 100% knowing there. <clears throat> so if God sent him, it would have been fine. But now he, now he gets onto the ship. What he has to do, the first thing he has to do is buy a ticket. So there's, a, the, the, there's the first thing. Nobody said anything about buying a ticket. God said go. Because God had a plan. So he goes the opposite direction. So guess what's, happened, what's going to happen? He's got to pay his own way. When God calls us, he's got a plan. He's got people waiting for us. He's got things in place that we need to just hook into. You see, Satan doesn't like that. And that's why he comes and he, and he spreads these, these little, little seeds all over the show. And he says, here's my seeds, you can choose. You can run my way or you can run God's way. So, those who travel on Satan's way will pay and stop at the toll booth that Satan has elected. And so they will have to huile. John had to pay a lot more than just a little fee. This is what he had to do. Jonah, his conscience started buckling his, his, his whole scheme. You remember that? So what happened? So he had to pay. He had to pay with a guilty conscience. He didn't scheme about that beforehand. So there was a payment to be made. Jonah had lost his self-respect, so he had to pay for that. You think about these things. This is who we are. This is what happens to us when, when we go the opposite direction. When, when God sends us, he's, we, we start paying with a guilty conscience. We start paying with our, with us, with our self, with our self respect, about our self-respect that's gone down the tubes. We have to pay exactly like Jonah did. There was no direction in his life. He chose his own direction. God wasn't in, in, in charge of that anymore. We had that that goes through and we want to change course. We're paying. There's a price to pay for that. And that price is a constant realization that, that, that he was on the run away from God. I don't want to be on that road. I, don't, I doubt if you want to be on that road about paying on, on a constant running away from, from, from your maker, your creator. You don't want to be there. Because he hasn't sent us there. I want to just say this, that we've got to remember that, that when we run, there's no calm seas, it's stormy water, man. There's no calm seas, it's stormy water. There's winds that blow up these storms, toss us out of direction, take us where we want to go. So life always will not be the best, except if we hear the voice of God. And stop running and turn and listen and not pay dearly like Jonah did. It was a bad experience that Jonah had. Very bad experience. Somebody said bad experience, Peter. It was a bad experience from start to finish. 
and it didn't work for you, man. I mean, you ended up in darkness, in the belly of a of a giant fish. What's so lacking inside you? Ooh, and you just hear da -da 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 -da, echoing all those off the spot there. Nobody to talk to you, no candle to burn, no lamp, dark. You should pull shit going this way and another thing going that way. It's not so cool. And he knew. I'm lost. I'm actually lost. What was it like for Jonah to run from God? It was something like this. It's like we would we would end up and we were going to the office of a travel agent and we'll say, I want to take a trip. I want to take this trip and I don't care where to, I don't care how, how, how long it takes. I, I, I just want to, I just want to go on this trip. So the clock looks at you and he says, but where would you like to go? Anywhere. It doesn't really matter. You see, I'm, I'm sort of mainly interested in just getting away from myself for a while. <laughs> getting away from yourself for a while. That's how confused people get. How ridiculous is that? Trying to escape from yourself. You can't escape from yourself, friend. Ons kan maak wat ons vir ons is nie. Ons kan nie vir ons self weg hard loop nie. Hear the voice of God calling you. Because he's calling you to him. He's comfort there. There's comfort there. There's not turmoil. There's no storm. There's comfort there. Don't run. If you're running from God, I want you to stop this evening. Stop where you are and turn to God. Because everywhere you turn, God will be there. It's ridiculous, but He's going to be there. Can I ask you, have you ever heard God speak to you? Have you ever, somebody, maybe ever, people came your way to want to speak to you about Jesus? You just like, hoid them away. That's what God's sending His people to you. God speaks to us in, in, in various ways. God's calling us to this evening, as, as, as we are this evening. He's calling us to, and we've got, I don't know how many people are listening this evening, but, and how many people will look and see, view afterwards, but, it's irrespective, I'm not interested in that. I'm just saying, dude, if you're hearing what, he, what he's saying this evening, there's, there's, there's some task that, that you as an individual, watching this, looking at this, 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 this oak behind on the screen here, look, saying, inside of you, there's a, there's a little task that you need to perform for God. Something that you need to go and do for God. And you say, I don't know what it is. You don't have to know. He's going to tell you because he wants to speak to you. And he wants to change your direction. He wants to stretch you. He just wants to hold you. And he wants to guide you. You say, what is that, Peter? I say, that's the revelation. There's a new thing being revealed in your life. There's a there's a there's a there's something in you too which is which will be revealed to you. Don't run from that revelation. Run to that revelation. And that revelation is the arms of Jesus. That revelation is is a life that probably we haven't heard now up until now. That revelation is the acceptance. This evening, the acceptance right now, the acceptance of you and I, hearing the voice of God and running to him, hearing the call and coming and saying, I bought a ticket, but I'm not going to use it. Where do you want me to go, Lord? What do you want me to do? Where do you want to send me, Father? That's the, that's, that's the direction I want to go. I'm not going to be told by the world where to go. I'm waiting for your call. Call me, Lord. I won't run from you, but I'll run to you. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you that you spent time with us this evening, Lord. Thank you, Father God, that whoever's watching right now, that you, Lord, are speaking into their lives. You've left a seed this evening, Father God, a seed that will that'll germinate, a seed that will that'll make its way. And Lord, let us, let us be obedient in ourselves and as you call us and as we listen to you this evening. But also excitement, Father God, within us that, that there's this, 
this direction that you're going to send us into. Oh God, I pray. Let us hear as your children this evening. Let us be obedient to the call. Let us run to you, Father, full on. Full on, Lord. Let us break that tape as we head home to the arms of the Father. Bless us, Lord, as we continue our journey on this planet Earth. Protect us, Lord, amongst the the wolves who come to us in sheep's clothing, Lord. Father God, I pray in Jesus' name that the chaos in the world will come to an end, Lord. I pray miraculously, Father God, that you would send out modern day Jonas, Lord, to take the message. And this message will go to the far corners of the earth. Because what's happening now today, Lord, all over this world, brings tears to your eyes, sorrow to your spirit. And Father God, you're not happy. And therefore we say, let us become a modern Jonah and go the direction you want us to go. And take your message, the one you to, the one that you want taken, and let us go and deliver it. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for being with me. May God bless you. May God keep you. May He come through for you in every decision you're making right now. I speak life over that for you this this, this evening. And I, and I ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that every one of your hungry children to be fed by your word, which is everlasting. Love you lots. Catch you next time. Bye-bye.